Now here's a demo about how to do charts. Charts are very popular with Visual, visual Society. Uh, starting on page 19, be sure you read those four rules about starting in column A and never mixing regular numbers up with totals. Uh, pie charts generally only having one set of numbers and uh, include the headings when you can and when you highlight your data, which is what we're going to do now. We're starting in A9 with a, a white cross there. We're going to highlight the data for uh, the charts that we're going to do. Notice I didn't go to column H or down to row 15. All the, the numbers are the same kind of numbers. Uh, regular numbers and totals are apples and oranges, and, and it will mess your chart up. Uh, then we go to the Insert tab at the top. Uh, the instructions there, you know, starting on page 20 and going on, say do a column chart, and usually the, the one at the top, the first one is the most popular one, so we're going to use the clustered column here and click on it. We get a, already get an example of what the chart's going to look like. It's called WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So if it's messed up here, it's going to be messed up when you get through. You just... Uh, delete it and start over. Uh, one of the things we want to do now is get rid of the word sales. Uh, now a little purple book, I must have missed this step when I was doing it, but you, you go up to the top where it says chart tools and then you can follow the, the book directions there. On the, Select the data. Now, the word sales has no data to it, we, so we want to remove it and then click on OK. Now we've got uh, over here on the right side where the legend is, there no, there's nothing in the legend that doesn't belong. Uh, the next step, with the chart tool still open, uh, the book says do the chart layout. You pull down the, the window so you get all of them and you kind of count. You look down, you know, three across. Here's number nine, which instructions say do number nine. And you notice that gives us a chart title uh, and the, the two different sides title. The title of this particular chart is Estimated Sales. It shows on page 21 there in the book. The axis title here is Amount. Click inside the box. What am I doing? Amount. That worked. And the, the horizontal axis down at the bottom. Now this would be almost redundant since everybody kind of knows what those are, but just for the heck of it, we can put months. Okay, uh, we're 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 done. We've got a nice looking chart there. Uh, at the top right, I'm there. It says move chart location. It's very important. Be listening on this one. Click on it. Uh, if you left it uh, where it was, and sometimes you do, you have the, the data and the chart on the same page, uh, but probably 80% of the time in the real world, you still want the chart all on one page because that means you, it's going to be printed bigger and people are going to be able to tell what it is. So you click on uh, the top button there and type column. Estimated sales. And you try to keep these relatively short. It's going to be the tab down at the bottom of the, the screen. Then click on OK. You know, so now you get a nice full full screen uh, to, to work with here as a chart. And if you print it out, it, it, it's on the whole page. Then you look down at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you're going to get a tab called Column Estimated Sales. And you see the tabs of uh, which you can click back on sheet one and you'll be back at your data. And you just go back and forth between the tabs if, if you want to see your, your data. Okay, making a pie chart. Of course, we said the pie chart is probably the most common. Uh, book says highlight A22. Rule on one says you got to start in column A. And we go over to uh, column B for January expenses. Uh, if time, I'll show you a little trick if you wanted to do the total expenses on the right over here. But rule number three says just generally you only have one set of data with uh, pie charts. Plus you see that I also did not go down to where the total expenses. Do not mix regular numbers with with totals. All right, then we go to the insert tab. We're going to do a pie chart. Click on it. Again, just a regular 2D pie for now. And you get the, the WYSIWYG in the middle.
click on the chart tools at the top. Actually, you don't have to do that on this one. It's already up. Uh, we want uh, probably this one on the left. Gives you a chart title. Well, let's look at what some of the others do. You don't you don't need a legend with a pie chart normally. Your pieces of the pie are going to be your your legend. Uh, so yeah, let's go back to the to the first one there. Notice it's giving us the percentages. Uh, pie charts are percentages of total. Uh, in other words, direct expenses turned out to be, for January turned out to be 20% of the total. While I'm at it, let's go ahead and click on the chart title and type January expenses. Like I say, it would be redundant to have a legend over here if you've got the pieces of the pie. Now, a, a little trick of the trade here is to cut a piece of pie if you wanted everybody to see the direct expenses in particular. And this, you know, this is only extra. So if you click on it and click on it again till you get to keep clicking to the the handles are just on that one piece of pie. And then you hold the left button key down. All right, I missed it. One more try. And I've cut that piece of pie out. I just got an email message. Then we go to move chart location up at the top. Again, click the top number. January expenses. Click OK. Now when you get to here, it's not too late. You can actually put the put the pie back together. Uh, if you don't if you don't like the way that looks uh, when you get over here. All right, of course you want to save the file uh, at the top, and that's it.